Hi everyone, Matt here from CarWow. So this is the launch of the Ford Focus ST and we're having to zip out of Nice Airport. Can you see there, they're closing it. Reason being, someone has left a bag here. They're gonna shut the airport down. And if we don't get out now, I'm not gonna be able to review this car for you. I have never had this on a launch in all my life. Lift. Yes, we've done it. I can now review this car for you. So, obviously in this video, I'm going to tell you what's new about the car. Shorter throws than a standard car. I'm gonna show you around the inside. It's all a bit scary. I'm gonna explain what's good about it. The suspension stiffens up. What's not so good about it? F off. Ah! <laughs> I don't know if he's really chasing me. Ah! I'm gonna be ignoring the normal route no idea where I'm going. And driving it on a very special circuit. Oh, and I've got him. Oh, my balls are bigger than his. And of course, yeah, I'm going to poke it with a stick. On guard. Let's start this review by driving the Ford Focus ST on the motorway because this is where this kind of car is specifically designed for. Now, actually, where I'm going, it is designed for. However, in the meantime, I'm testing out the car's cruise control. So it does that thing where it can keep you a safe distance from the car in front using radar. Also cameras can read the lines in the road and it should auto steer to keep me in lane. Though this system's a little bit unpredictable. It's kind of working now, but it does sort of wander around all over the place. It's almost as if this system has just downed a bottle of whiskey because if I just let it do its thing, I think I will get pulled over for driving under the influence. Yeah. I've been cruising along for a while now, and the economy I'm getting from this car is actually all right. It's 6.9 litres per 100 kilometres, which is about 34 miles per gallon. So yeah, just sit back, put it in sixth gear, and let it do its thing. It's reasonably quiet and quite comfy, actually, on these smooth roads. Anyway, this is all a bit boring, isn't it? Let's quickly cut to five cool things about this new Focus ST. There's bigger brakes for improved stopping power, so you have 330 millimeter discs up front and 302 millimeters at the back. The manual gear selector has 7% shorter throws than a standard car for a more sporty feel. The car suspension is stiffer over the standard Focus. So at the front, the springs are 20% stiffer. At the back, they're 13% stiffer. The ride height is 10 millimeters lower. And you also get continuously variable damping so it can monitor the road surface and react to the conditions. Also, when you go through the different driving modes, the suspension stiffens up. This Focus ST has the fastest steering of any Ford model currently available. So you can go from lock to lock in exactly two turns. The ST has a high performance engine. It's a 2.3 litre four cylinder turbo with 280 horsepower, 420 newton meters of torque. It also has anti-lag so that when you put your foot down, it responds instantly. And there's even an e-diff which can send power to whichever wheel has the most grip so you can make the most of all that performance. According to Ford, this new Focus ST can do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, also known as 0 to 60, in just 5.7 seconds. I've got my specialist timing app on my phone and I would like to test that figure. Unfortunately, I haven't found a road straight enough that's safe to do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. So instead, I'm gonna launch it from 0 to 50 kilometers an hour, which is 30 miles an hour, because that's the limit on this road. I'm still gonna use launch control, which basically I just floor the throttle and release the clutch. So here we go. Oh, slippery. And that was it way back there. I think it did that with its wheels spinning. So 0 to 50 kilometers an hour in 1.7 seconds. So not too bad. Okay, so I knew you guys would not be satisfied with this test. So I headed to the nearest racing circuit to really put the new ST through its paces. So here's the grid here. I'm actually going to do something naughty. I'm going to stop <laughs> at the start line because I'm going to time a lap. So the lap record is 1 minute 14, 20 something. I'm on the start finish line. Ferrari's just gone off. I'm going to take him though. Here we go. Come on. Catching him up. Oh, this feels quick. 
or I'm slipstreaming in. This Ford Focus ST really helping out with its improved suspension and LSD and things. I'm gonna be late on the brakes. I'm gonna be really, 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 really late on these brakes. Oh, and I've got him. Oh, my balls are bigger than his. Oh, here's the curbs. I'm gonna take these curbs, click this apex. Hopefully, I'm not gonna click that guy. Oh, this is tight. Oh, bikes. Here we go into the hairpin. Using Ford's rev matching there to help me out on the downshift. Ford is starting to try and pull away. Get this apex as well. All oh, right, in the curbs. Oh, yes. The first Ferrari has just pitted. I'm just about to be taken by another one. Damn those Ferraris, they're everywhere. Oh, yeah, we're flying through here. Maxing this car out, this is insane. Oh, it looks like this guy is going to pit as well. Oh, he's pitting. That's it, I'm ahead of both Ferraris now. Doing this chicane here. And just hoon it past the cafes. Oh no, the Ferrari's back. Where the heck did he come from? Here comes the finish line. What am I going to do? Well, there you go. I finished the lap. And if you look at the video timeline, that took me 1 minute 13 seconds, which is a new Monaco Grand Prix world record. Oh, yes. And you witnessed it here. Time during it was 8.35. What? It was 8.35 minutes. Don't spoil the illusion, Jack. Okay, so it took 8 minutes 35 seconds to crawl around here. It was rather uneventful. Let's talk about the design upgrades over the normal focus. So you have LED headlights as standard, a satin effect honeycomb grille with ST badging, lower front bumper with more grillage, which is all real, and even the vents down the side, look at that. They're not fake, they pass the car wow stick of truth. Down the sides, you get 18 inch alloys as standard, but you can upgrade to these 19s, and they're really nice in this satin effect once again, which matches the grille. You've got side skirts, and the car sits low to the ground to make it look more aggressive. There's a boot spoiler as well. You get LED tail lights to complement the LED headlights at the front. And then you have a bigger rear bumper as well with two separate exhaust pipes, which pass the car wow stick of truth. In fact, they pass the car wow bottle of truth. Now on the old Focus ST, the exhaust was in the middle, but that meant you couldn't pull a caravan or a trailer. So they moved them to the outside, which is much better. Tell you what, it's been a real struggle to film the outside of this car because we've pulled up at various locations and because of this colour, which is known as Fury Orange, it gets bombarded by insects. So we've been plagued by bees, wasps, hornets, horseflies. And this location looks kind of good, but let me show you this. It is actually part of the Ant Super Highway. So we're having to keep on moving, otherwise we're going to get bitten by those guys. So I want you to vote, click up there. Which insect would you like to rid the earth of entirely? Would it be the ants? Would it be the wasps? Would it be the hornets? Or would it be the horseflies? Changes inside the Focus ST are less noticeable, though the things that do stand out include these sports seats, which are made by Recaro, and they are very comfortable. There's also the ST steering wheel, which has a sport mode, so you can quickly just go straight into sport, or you can cycle through the modes using the mode button over here. You also have an ST gear selector, there are aluminium pedals down here, ST badging on the mats, and Ford Performance on the kick plates. You also get ST and Ford Performance on the infotainment system when you turn it on. In fact, this car comes fully loaded, so you get the 8-inch touchscreen as standard, with satellite navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You get B&O Play Sound System as well. It's, it is pretty decent with the amount of kit you get on it. Now, this car is still attracting the insects. I can see them bouncing into the windows. But not only that, it's now attracted a huge cat. Look at him up there. It's all a bit scary. Other than an alarming ability to attract the local wildlife, the ST is just like any other Focus. So yeah, plenty of room in the back seats and a boot that is just about okay. As you can see, we've packed it very, very tidily, yeah. One way the ST isn't meant to be like a normal Focus is the noise it makes, or is supposed to make. So, here's an opportunity to test this exhaust.
nice little crack. But not every time. And if I'm brutally honest, I think it sounds a little bit bland. What do you reckon? Click up there to bow. Do you like the sound of the exhaust? It's not going to get better than in this tunnel, is it? So, here comes the bright light. Ah! <laughs> Brace yourself. And that brings me on to five annoying things about this car. You can get a diesel version of the ST, and already that sounds less than the petrol. But to make it even worse, Ford doesn't give that car the e-diff. Instead, it uses torque vectoring by braking, like normal Focus is. It also doesn't get the clever, continuously variable suspension either. Well, you'll be able to get this car with an automatic gearbox with paddle shifters. The system won't be a dual clutch type like you get in a Golf R, so it won't be quite so fast at shifting. This car torque steers like crazy, so when you put your foot down, the steering wheel just squirms in your hand as it tries to put the power down. I'll show you now, look. And that just tried to send me straight into that rock, which is probably better than that way over the cliff, so yeah, it is a bit frightening. This Focus ST is rather expensive. The petrol version starts from £32,000, which means that it's over two grand more than the equivalent i30N performance. Now, if you want to see how much money you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out banner up there to get a car wow to make sure you're paying a fair price. That's the sales pitch over. If you want your Focus ST to come with rev matching so that it automatically blips the throttle when you change down a gear, and with a track mode, for even more focused driving, plus launch control, then you have to pay extra for the performance pack, which is £250. I just don't know why Ford didn't throw that in for free. Okay, so I've driven this car on the motorway. It's almost as though this thing has had a bottle of whiskey. I don't know what's going on with it at all. I've driven it through the center of Monaco. Over here, this is the new car, mate. This is the new one. Neither of which are ideal for testing out, really. So I finally come to a nice twisty mountain pass, perfect for this car. So I've got it in normal mode. So I've got the suspension in its softest setting. The throttle response is somewhat subdued and the engine isn't the noisiest that it can be. So I think, oh no, I'm gonna make it a little bit more extreme, put it into sports mode. Feel the change notably in the throttle response. And the suspension is quite bouncy now. One thing you do have though in sports mode is auto rev matching so you change it down a gear and it'll blip the throttle for you so you don't have to do it though if you want to you can turn that function off if you want to heal and tell yourself and that brings you on to the gear shift which is all right but it's nowhere near as snickety as that in a honda civic type r what this road does show though is that that really fast steering helps you get around tight hairpins without having to do too much wheel twirling the problem is though, when you're just kind of going through sweepy bends or on the straight, it can make the car feel a little bit twitchy. One thing I can't fault though, the brakes. The brakes are very, very good. There's lots of feel in the pedal and plenty of stopping power, which is great. <laughs> if, you, if you get things wrong here, you end up over the edge of a cliff, which brings me on to track mode. So. There we go, it's engaged now and the traction control is off. The suspension's even firmer to the point that this car's starting to just skip down the road. It's a little bit insane. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> We're hardly in contact with the surface at all. It's not very comfortable. Is it cameraman Jack? No. No, so I'm gonna actually put it back into normal mode, which is the best setting I think for this surface, and then it's much easier to make the car flow. Now, one thing I do notice about this car is the pulling power of this engine. So even from low down, it's got a good load of shove on it. What it's not so great at is the very top end though, you feel like it could do more. There's no real point in taking it much past 5,500 RPM. It just keeps off, but doesn't really go manic at the top end. So then what's my final verdict on the new Ford Focus ST? Well, I don't think it's quite as focused as a Honda Civic Type R, and it's not quite such a, a laugh as the cheaper Hyundai i30N. But you know what? It's still a really good hot hatch, and I do like it a lot. The only thing is though, it makes me wonder what 
the Focus RS is going to be like. And I guess we're just going to have to wait to find out. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.